Jordan, thank you so much for the super chat. He says, with advancements in AI tech, do you see AI programs creating uh, the perfect vehicle for humans? Any company looking in that besides the nanotech um, form? Um, you know, AI, it's smart in some ways, but it's also still incredibly dumb in others. And I know it'll probably evolve really fast and get better really quickly. Um, and I mean, there's always the potential for AI to maybe introduce a new idea that a car company, you know, hasn't thought of on their own, especially with a lot of these companies being echo chambers where it's a boardroom of people all high fiving each other and, you know, like with supers being like, yeah, let's put an old interior in and let's, you know, make them uncompetitive in other ways. Let's make them hideous. But hey, people are going to keep buying them high fives all around. And, you know, it's, um, you know, so maybe AI would open up some of these companies and be like, oh, wait, maybe we have some open mindedness to this that we wouldn't have if some random new employee came in and said, hey, why don't you make a Baja? You know, maybe if an AI tech says, hey, why are you not doing a Baja? Maybe that'll sway them more or something just to pick on Subaru unfairly. But, um, you know, I I think AI is, it's you know, it's even with my experience, try, I've tried to use it to make, make titles a little more exciting and come up with other video ideas in the past. And it's, you know, it's okay, but it's, it still certainly has its limits. I think, you know, car companies, especially some of the more uh, dated car companies, they have, you know, they have their formulas, they have what they want as far as, you know, their goals and what they think people expect out of the brand, what they want the brand to be. And, you know, so I think there's not a ton of flexibility. I think AI could maybe optimize a few things for that kind of stuff, but I really feel like, it's probably, it's going to be a while before I think AI can really, yeah, change car design and, and car setup and things like that. Um, Cause I, yeah, I just feel like there's, there's not a lot there. Cause you know, for example, an AI would probably say, what is the most efficient vehicle to minimize people's costs and to uh, make their lives better? And AI would probably say an EV because it's cheap to fill up. And again, if you can get that cost parity with the battery, I'm not trying to be a cheerleader for EVs here, but you know, from a logical cold standpoint, you know, it's cheaper to run. It's less work to go to a dealer and get an oil change. You know, you don't have to do that with EVs. And as long as assuming the EV is reliable and safe and all that, it's, you know, in an AI's mind, EV is the right answer for basically every commuter um, that at least can charge at home or at work. You know, but then you look at the reality, people are like, no, I don't want that for whatever reason. And a lot of these reasons, some of them are rational. Some of them are also irrational. And I think an AI, you know, probably can't compensate for that irrational part. And this is what car companies, you know, with humans running them have to grapple with is like, this is what we should be doing, but this is what people want. And, you know, those two things I think are what keep a lot of car companies from doing the logical thing. I think there's a lot of companies that, you know, they do have that very logical, like, this is the best way, this is what we should do. And then it hurts their their competitiveness because it's like, yeah, this is great, but it's not what people want. I think, you know, like Mazda, you know, they do all this research about how distracting it is to use a touchscreen. And according to their studies of, you know, filming, I don't know how many thousands of people's eyeballs and their movements and how much they have to move with the controller wheel versus a touchscreen, Mazda swears up and down, a controller wheel is the more safe thing. It is the less distracting thing. And a lot of Mazda owners would agree, but a lot of people, they, you know, see a Mazda or they see one of my reviews. I see it in all my comment sections. Oh, I don't want a controller wheel. And it's a deal killer for them. Completely just not even open to consideration. And AI would maybe say everyone should have a controller wheel, but everyone wants a touchscreen. You know, there's stack all those types of, you know, things that you just, you know, there's just a couple of examples of ways that humans probably prefer a worse way from what is the optimal computer optimized thing. And so I think that AI could actually hurt car companies if they listen to AI too much, because I think it's going to, you know, humans are not rational beings, especially when it comes to car purchases. It's an emotional purchase that doesn't make a lot of sense for a lot of people. Um, there are some people that are very cold about it and they'll just, you know, make a spreadsheet and, you know, list out pros and cons or whatever. But a lot of people, it's just, they like the color. They like the way it looks. The interior feels great. I mean, I get all kinds of comments from people that make, they say, oh, well, this, this Lexus has a worse ride than my old 10 year old Toyota. It's like, objectively, that cannot be true. But to that person, it is very much their reality. And so they will, you know, not ever consider a new Lexus because their 10 year old Toyota rides better in their mind or whatever. And there's, 
there's all those types of things as well. So there's there's a lot of different things you're going up against. And I think AI will never be able to properly account for the irrationality of humans. And this is why autonomous cars, I think, will never go anywhere either for a long, long time, because AI has to compensate for the unpredictable nature of humans, the stuff that doesn't make sense, the you know, bogus, you know, just bozo stuff that we see on the roads every single day, as anyone who ever drives can attest to, whether it's just bad decision making by people, irrational reactions to things, whatever the case might be, you know, the computers can't account for that. If every car on the road was driven by a computer, we'd have autonomous cars tomorrow, but you can't make that switch over. And so in this in-between period, you know, computers are struggling with all that stuff. So, you know, that's, those are some of the biggest, you know, hurdles right now.